Hello person, welcome to this place. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with AG Grid in a Vue 3 application. To start off, let's create a Vue app using Vue CLI called This Place. Next, let's cd into the app folder, open the project and add AG Grid dependencies, which are AG Grid Community and AG Grid Vue 3. Now let's run the project. Open the browser on the right and we can't have everything. Where would we put it? But the Vue app is running. Alrighty, a quick look at package.json. Here we can see AG Grid dependencies that we provided to the project. AG Grid community is the core of AG Grid and it has all the logic. AG Grid View 3 is the view rendering part of the AG Grid. You need both for AG Grid to work in view. Just make sure that the versions are the same for each. Let's go to app view and delete the junk files to start in a fresh app. Now let's get coding. First let's import AG Grid view component, register it and add to our template. Every grid needs some columns and rows. Let's create an array for column definitions and row data and pass them to AG grid component. For this example, I will make three columns and call them make model price. For the row data, I will add three sample rows. Each object here will represent one row inside the grid. Okay, so column deaths are here and row data is here. Please note that the column def fields make model price define the row data. You can see that each row has make model price. So the make column will display Vauxhall Ford and Volkswagen. And on the right hand side, there we can see that the grid is displaying. The data is there, but it doesn't look pretty. That is because I have not included grid CSS styles yet. Let's do it now. First, let's add a G grid CSS, which is the core CSS the grid needs to work. Next, let's import the theme CSS. I will go with a G grid theme Alpine, which comes with a G grid. To apply the theme, we add class with the theme name to the grid component in the template. And lastly, we add the grid size to the grid component in the template. And can you guess what time it is? That's right, it's grid time. Alrighty, how about a neat trick where by adding the word dark to the theme import, and components class, we can use the dark alpine theme. Let me just undo the dark theme. Now I will come on out the theme import and we can see the grid is displaying without the theme. This could be useful if you would like to create a theme from scratch. Just remember, you need a core structural CSS for the grid to work. The width and the height of the grid is determined by the size of the component. Set the size you need and the grid will adjust. But wait, there's more. Let's put our row data and column devs into reactive state. To do this, I will import reactive from view and set the initial state, update the data bindings in the template, and now we have the ability to update row data and column devs via composition API. Let's do that now by getting some data from the server. First, I will import on mounted lifecycle event. Here's some code I prepared earlier. Inside the event, we use fetch to get data from this URL. The result of this is JSON, so it's converted into JavaScript object. Then we set the JavaScript object as row data inside the grid. And now we can see lots and lots of rows. Now, isn't that a fine thing? Now, why don't we have a closer look at the column definitions here? There are many properties you can set here. For example, I will enable sorting and filtering by adding sortable and filter properties. Now you can see that sorting and filtering is enabled for all the columns. So all you need to enable sorting and filtering are these two properties in the column defs. There are many properties you can set on column definitions. I just use these two to show how to set things up. Please check our documentation to see all the things that can be done with columns. I know. I know, you're thinking, there's a lot of repetition here. Let's sort this gammy by adding default call def and set sorting and filtering here to work across all columns. Default call def is here, you can see sortable and filtering here and not on each individual column definition. We have added the grid property to the component tag and returned it. As you can see, sorting and filtering is still working across all columns. So that was a quick intro into column defs. Let's move on to AG Grid component properties. There are many multifarious and various things you can configure with grid properties. I will add to row selection and animate rows. Row selection allows us to select rows. When I click on the grid, you can see rows being selected. By holding control, I can select multiple rows and by holding shift, I can select a range of rows. The second property, animate rows, when it is on and the rows are moving, we can see how smoothly they roll into their position. And just like column devs, there are many multifarious and various grid properties. So check the docs for what to do. See how the grid can help you. That's my spin. 
Now moving on to grid events, of which there are many fired by the grid. I will add on cell clicked event and create a handler. We will print the event to the console. Now let's open the console and when I click some cells, you can see event printed. And guess what? The grid can throw so many events, you will think it's a never ending party. Check the docs to see what they are. There's one more thing I want to show you. It is how to use grid API. First, let's import uref, the clear API variable, add grid ready event and save the API to view ref in the grid ready event handler. Next, let's create a button to call grid API for deselecting rows. A quick look at what we've created. We imported the view ref and assign it to the grid API constant. We are using on grid ready event bound to on grid ready event handler. We have declared the handler in the setup here and returned it in the handler. Once the event has fired, we save the API in our view ref from the parameters received. We made a button with a click event to call the select rows function. Declared the click handler in the return. Inside we access grid API deselect all via grid API dot value whenever the button is clicked. Now let's select a few rows and call the API when we click the button. Magic, isn't it? And we're done. This is getting started with AG Grid View. We set up a simple view app, we put AG Grid inside, we configured the columns, configured the grid, listened to events, and used Grid API. This video is the first video in the series of how to use AG Grid and View. Continue watching the videos and learn more.